This meeting is our regularly scheduled official action meeting when we will vote on matters which have been discussed in previous meetings. Tonight we will also present proclamations to outstanding students. This meeting is being videotaped for community cable channels. Individuals attending this meeting and intending to speak to the board should be aware that they are being videotaped. In order to meet the requirements of Pennsylvania Sunshine Law, it is necessary to record the names of all citizens who speak to the board during the meeting. To assure compliance with this requirement, it is essential that those planning to address the board come to the microphone and state their name and address. Members of the audience are asked to limit their questions and comments to no more than five minutes. This limit will permit time for all those who wish to speak to the board to do so. Whenever members of the audience exceed this time limit, the board president may ask the individual to yield the microphone to the next speaker. And this is in reference to board policy 8344.2. So at this time, uh, Dr. Mangano, I know you have some announcements, so why don't you lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance tonight? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, apologize for the delay, but believe it or not, it was not the board's fault, nor anybody's really. It was a technical problem that we were having with this specific camera here to my right, your left. So uh, we believe it's been taken care of. Dr. Bose and I have to share a mic, which will go back to uh, um, back to the uh, audiovisual area here to the left and I'm hoping that everything's going to be picked up because I know as a parent if this meeting was screwed up when my child was getting an award I'd be really upset so let's hope that everything is perfect tonight and you know what if it isn't we're going to get a fix and we're going to bring you back and do it again because those films last a lifetime for parents so if we don't get it right tonight we're going to do it again okay all righty, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, recommend approval of the minutes of the 729th meeting held on 1129.96 as circulated. So I need a motion. Motion by, help me. Please Mrs. Please. Krieger, second by Schur. Any questions? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, and I apologize, I forgot to bring the, uh, the copy, but how would you understand? Okay, well, I don't go. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was an, a, uh, a vote on the uh, modular, all the elementary things. Correct. Which I abstained on and was uh, listed as a no vote. And I'd like that corrected. And I also believe David was a, an abstention, not a no vote. Mrs. Hatfield is working tonight in, uh, in not only her own place uh, that she holds here every month, but also. Uh, Board Secretary Weir is quite ill and could not make this evening, so she's going to be doing both jobs. So, Mrs. Hatfield, anything that seems out of the ordinary, just document it, and it can be uh, corrected later. So okay. Yeah, one I was have a motion to table, and another was the motion itself. The motion to that, that you approve the plan for elementary growth. I think I, I have it. I, I, I have it. it. Okay, ladies, one, one moment. Yeah, but it's, there's a motion to move, and we did vote no. Okay, one moment. That's right. And then this one says you both said. Yeah. Yeah. But they abstained. I remember that. Yeah, we abstained. Yeah, you abstained on this one. Nice sign. Thank you. You did it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's on page BM-2. We'll sign it. That helps down toward the bottom. I would say it's the second motion up from the bottom. <coughs> okay, Mrs. Krieger, you made a motion. Do you, uh, and uh, Mrs. Shore, you made a second. Do both of you agree to the corrections? Okay. All in favor would say aye. 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 Opposed would say nay. Thank you. Recommend approval of the minutes of the 31st annual reorganization meeting held on 12 2 96 is circulated. So moved. Motion by Mosey, second by Krieger. Any questions? Board around? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <coughs> Thank you. Recommend approval of the minutes of the 731st meeting held on 12 10 96 as circulated. So moved. Motion by Mosey, second by Allen. I do need a correction, Mrs. Hatfield. On um, 
121096 board minutes one first sheet at the very bottom it says Ms. Mengel confirmed that neither Mr. Franklin nor his firm will be submitting a separate bill for services now or in the future how we wish that to be true <laughs> we wish that everything was pro bono uh, that is incorrect after the word nor his firm will be paying out any referral fee to any party in relationship to services they have provided our district. Now we're in the future. Are there any other corrections to those minutes around, Mr. Mosey? Sorry. Any corrections to those minutes? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mr. Allen? No. <laughs> Stopped him from talking, didn't it? <laughs> Mr. Clements? Mr. Hill? Just, Mrs. Krieger? Uh, yeah. Mr. Scherr? Mr. Schilling? I'll just say I will be abstaining. I wasn't there. So I'll need the sheet. Okay. We'll need one All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Abstention? Abstain. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. At this time, Dr. Bose, we have proclamations. We do. Uh, we want to honor some outstanding young women who are great scholars and athletes at North Bend High School. And I understand that uh, uh, Coach uh, Crawford can't be here. Is that uh, your understanding, young ladies? So I'm going to have the pleasure of introducing you since the coach is not here. I'll ask you as I call your name to come forward, and then our board president will present you with a special proclamation that recognizes your outstanding accomplishments. These young women are from North Penn High School's ladies cross country team, and they have won the Suburban One, Suburban One Patriot Division and National Conference, and they were PIAA District One champs, and they were third place in the state. Congratulations. And I'll call you up, uh, as I understand there are some who can't be here, so I'll call those whom I believe to be here. Please come forward, uh, stand uh, against this wall, and then Ms. Mingle will have a proclamation for you, and. Uh, I'm sure she wants to shake your hand too. Absolutely. Katrina Brown. Melissa Croak. Beth George. Karen Welsh. And I understand that uh, Tracy Cushman, Jessica Franks, Tiffany Huff, and Diane Shillow are not here. Is that right? Here? Okay. okay. You have the right one. Absolutely. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you know, I'm going to ask for the one thing. I don't know Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. 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 No? Kristen. Yeah. Kristen. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for the Ladies, if you would, ladies. If you would circle around and take opportunity to shake hands with all the board members, I'd appreciate that just as much. I believe this way. <laughs> They'll be on camera longer. That's they should be on camera longer, and also I think these women are going to be famous someday. So take your chances now, shaking their hand. I'll take two. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Good job. Don't do that when the band comes. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
I've just been advised not to do that when the band comes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We just might anyway. Might be here a while. We might be here a while. That's right. That's right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you. And moms and dad in the audience, you uh, should be uh, quite proud this evening, and uh, we share your enjoyment. Okay, committee reports, facilities, buildings, and grounds, Mr. Schilling. Uh, no report. No. Community services and policy, Mr. Hill. Yes, um, this evening I would, uh, among other things, I would like to do the first reading on the, uh, on the policy uh, entitled professional research. Uh, for the information of the, uh, of the TV audience, the professional research uh, uh, policy was written to, uh, to make clear uh, to all uh, as to the uh, administration and the North Penn School District's policy regarding how uh, that activity should be conducted. So let me read that policy uh, this time since it's the first reading. The school board recognizes the value of educational research conducted by staff members and encourages professional growth and development as, as exemplified in the pursuit of advanced degrees. Members of the board hope and expect that all professional staff members and administrators will seek to advance their knowledge and experience through additional coursework and schooling. In addition, the board understands the attainment of advanced degrees most often necessitates the completion of unique individual research. However, any and all graduate, undergraduate research studies carried out by members of the professional and or administrative staff using district or school data of any kind and or staff or students as subjects must be approved in advance by the superintendent or the designee. When human subjects are involved in research, there will be adequate protection of their rights and welfare. Parents of children who are subjects of research or adults if they are subjects will be provided one, an explanation of the procedures and their purposes, two, a description of any possible risks and benefits, three, an offer to respond to inquiries or procedures, and four, instruction on the right to refuse to participate or to discontinue participation at any time without prejudice. The superintendent or designee will maintain records on any and all research projects conducted by staff as part of the academic professional research. This is the first reading, and we'll, the next reading will be at the meeting in January. Uh, the uh, policy, there are a, a number of other policies being worked on at this time, and they'll be coming forward in the ensuing months. I, at, uh, at this time, let me speak about one other item that has taken place in a related subject, is that uh, uh, we had, a, uh, the president and I met with the, had a meet and discuss with the North Penn Education Association uh, on a number of subjects, uh, and we are intending to have these meetings on a continuum uh, so that uh, the relationship between the Educational Association and the board uh, is a positive one, which we're trying to attain. Uh, the two topics that we talked about, uh, one of them, uh, uh, action is being, uh, being moving forward on is the early retirement plan which uh, was in place last year and which the board is reinstituting this year to allow people with 30 years of service to have an early retirement and the other uh, subject of discussion that we had is is related to a policy that's under development related to sabbatical leaves as it must be modified per the state law that it was just changed that concludes my report Okay, thank you, Mr. Hill. Questions around, uh, we'll start to the right, Mr. Schilling. Mr. Schur. I, I just have a quick question in relationship to this policy, uh, Ms. Mandel. Sure. Um, I understand that this deals with um, our professional employees, but uh, Mr. Hill, at the present time, is there any policy that the district has in regards to uh, any kind of research that uh, may want to uh, take place here in the district by outside agencies? There is no policy, to my knowledge, that relates to that. Uh, if, if there, I believe there is a need for such, I don't know if those requests have ever came to us. I think they would be, have to be handled individually. I'd say pretty much because there may have been one. Um, but overall, I would say anyone that falls 
the mail. So we get lots of requests for research studies. We deny them. Okay, but this isn't in, in, in particular to, to research, but I guess where I'm going with this is outside agencies that may want to come in and for purposes of their own uh, want to things that go on in our school district or interview students uh, for projects that they may be involved with. Do we have any type of policy in place right now um, that governs who can come in or an application phase or any type of release uh, procedure to make sure that all of our students are, are being protected and that, and that, their, uh, that their rights are being protected. There's no Just policy in place that speaks to that directly. If, uh, if, if we believe there's a need, as I understand that uh, Judy Clark said that all of the requests for that type of thing have been not pretty much denied to date. Mm -hmm. And I would assume that if there was a special case, it would come to the board for individual action. Uh, so no, a policy may not be needed. Well, Dr. Bose, can, let Dr. Bose answer to some of that maybe. In addition to what Mrs. Clark said, uh, in one and a half years as your superintendent, I've had one request by an outside researcher, which I denied. Uh, with specifically, I think what uh, you're talking about, Mrs. Krieger, are media contacts mm -hmm. with students. As a matter of fact, we've had a discussion uh, with Solicitor Bartle on that matter. It's a follow-up topic for continuing discussion. We're looking at the whole matter of our obligation uh, in loco parentis and the parents' uh, uh, opportunity uh, to uh, uh, have an influence on that and whether or not that exists as a First Amendment or a Fourteenth Amendment issue. So uh, the short way of telling you what I'm trying to tell you is it's a topic that's already been introduced uh, between staff and Solicitor Bartle in our regular meetings and it's an ongoing consideration. And if there's any recommendations for policy that would come forth it to would. Mr. Hill. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Krieger. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clements. None. None. Mr. Allen. <coughs> Mr. Mosey. Uh, just a question. Um, it's going to be board board policy. It's going to be a board policy, is that correct? Yes. Um, I don't know if it's necessary, but will the board be getting any kind of a report or an update as to who is performing certain? I don't know if it's even necessary, but it's just a question of board policy. Oh, I. I my personal opinion on that, and I think probably the opinion of the board is that if if such a, a research is going on, I think it's it would be only reasonable that the board be advised that that has been conducted as an information item. Okay, okay. Mr. Hill, three concerns. I. I I don't know if you can address, but if you would just jot them down. Second paragraph must be approved in advance by the superintendent. Um, I guess I'm not too sure why the school board is left out of that as a, also uh, necessary to make approvals. Also, a number four, um, the, 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 you know, really what it's saying here is the research can be done unless the participant opts out. And uh, I'm not too sure why we didn't have it where the participant had to opt in instead of opting out. And I guess last was a question I had last time, and that was the last paragraph. The product of research, should it go into a um, curriculum? Should it become a product that is eventually put out for commercial sale, um, i.e., someone gets famous on their research? Um, if your child or my child is in that uh, research, are they not entitled to some sort of a, a fee or? I guess all everybody's rights don't seem to be intact in this situation, or somebody has more rights than somebody else. I, I guess. I Those are good questions. I'll I'll refer back to the solicitor who okay. work on this. Okay. Okay. I guess I just want to know who owns the product, if the children were the you know participators. All right. That's all I have. Anything else, Mr. Hill? Is that the end of report? That's the end of my report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hill. <coughs> Elementary education, Mr. Allen. No report. Thank you, sir. Secondary Ed, Mr. Mosey. No report. Thank you, Mr. Mosey. Uh, Mr. Question, Mrs. Krieger. I see. This is what. Looks to me like the one that we received in our packet on Friday is different than tonight. Okay. The one in your packet. I'm going by the minutes sent to us in our packet. Now, there's a sheet here this evening that represents what I'll explain at the end of the committee reports as to the new assignments. Um, 
we can still follow through that, except K through 12 curriculum has not uh, essentially started. I mean, this is the last of the reports of December under the old committees established by uh, uh, Mr. Clemens. The new assignments will begin in January. Um, Mr. Mosey, you said you had no report under no, secondary ed? No report. Okay, special education and student services, Mrs. Krieger. Certainly. Uh, mm -hmm. That's fine. On December 5th, I included in the board packet, uh, Mrs. Krieger and I attended a meeting that was held at the IU, sponsored by uh, Pennsylvania Department of Education, Bureau of Curriculum and Academic Services. And it was on the Academic Standards Initiative moving toward accountability. And we have included that packet uh, for you so that you can see the PowerPoint slides that really talk about the justification of the standards that we're required to work with in our curriculum review. The 53 academic standards under Chapter 5 uh, were discussed and, and a copy is attached for you. Uh, the requirements of the academic knowledge and skills that have to be demonstra demonstrated by a student will be required in order for a student to obtain a diploma. In addition, the content area standards, we talk a lot about the uh, commission that has been going on at the state level, that is, is a commission that is really looking at content area standards. And those content areas would be in English, reading, writing, science, and mathematics. They are almost completed. Uh, we understood that these would be PDE's intent to adopt these in April. So in addition to the 53 academic standards, which are a requirement, there will be content standards. Uh, foreign language and the senior project requirements we learned are still under Chapter 5 and are expected to be implemented according to each district's strategic plan guidelines and timetables. To reach that end, we've been working very hard uh, in our in-service time to make sure that the professional staff K-12 has an understanding of the academic standards and the expectations. Content area departments have been reviewing each of these expectations relative to the content areas. The elementary staff and the middle school staff have continued through the early dismissal uh, to talk about the standards and also the ESSA assessment that will be coming up. And um, I will continue to give you activities of the committees that are working to try to bring forth recommendations to the board. And at this time, I'd like to defer to Dr. Bowes because we did get some very good news today. Thank you, Dr. Mangano. This is a letter faxed to us uh, which is dated tomorrow to be mailed tomorrow, but uh, we'll, we'll send it out to the board with the usual delivery tomorrow. It's from uh, Dr. Marianne Nobers, the Deputy Secretary for Elementary and Secondary Education, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, the strategic plan review uh, voted unanimously to recommend the approval of the strategic plan submitted by the North Penn School District. I am pleased to no notify you that I concur with their decision and their commendations and recommendation. There are two commendations. The first, the review team was impressed with the scope of the community involvement in the development of your strategic plan. It was obvious to the team that the planning process was taken seriously by the participants. Number two, the review team also commented favorably on the thoroughness in the planning process given the time constraints within the district and we know that all very well there there's one recommendation and that is the review the review team strongly recommends that the north penn school district ensure that the action plans developed by the remaining seven planning teams be systematically reviewed this review should continue with input from the community at large and the planning team in particular Please retain this letter as your official notification of the department's approval of the North Penn School District strategic plan. Congratulations and good luck with the implementa implementation stage of your plan. And I think the board should feel flattered that the plan was received so well and two commendations were issued on it. And we'll provide you personal copies. Thank you. 
Very good. And uh, Dr. Uh, Mangano, as expediter of this project in the short period of time that you had, I hope you feel that this is a, a career high for you. And I hope you're as proud of yourself as uh, we are of you. Thank you. Something? Yes, sir. Please. The board should not congratulate itself to feel. I think Dr. Van Gano is doing all the credit. We just allowed it to happen and got out of the way. You did the work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, just one last thing. Uh, sure. In regards to the new academic standard, uh, it, it's my understanding that the state is going to mm -hmm. forward to us in February, I believe. Um, request for us to take action in regards to the new standards. Basically what they want us to do is vote on an intent to adopt. Um, to, I guess uh, Governor Ridge uh, would like to know from the districts across the state their intent, uh, whether they support these new academic standards or not support these standards. So we will be asked in the near future to vote on an intent to adopt. Now, will we have those uh, that that language sent to us in time for the solicitor to review and also to give this board an opportunity to place that on a work session agenda? I mean, they're not going to rush. No, so. How much time do you feel we have to work with that? that's going to require work sessions and it's going to require hearings and it's going to, you know, uh, community input. Well, there's mm -hmm. content area standards that our content area will also look at to make sure that since those are going to be like the minimum, we're going to look at all the other areas that are in the Okay, because they're writing that for the entire state, which includes urban schools and and schools that that do better than us, and schools that don't do as well as we do, and certainly wouldn't want to go with the minimum requirements. Okay, um, thank you, Mrs. Krieger. Around this way, Mr. Clemens, any questions or? Mr. Allen again, Mr. Mosey. Okay, Mrs. Krieger, any further report? Okay, thank you. Uh, support services, Mr. Weitz isn't here. Is anyone prepared to um, proceed for him? Okay. Finance, Mr. Shaw. Thank you. Okay, is that a question you're seeking now, or do you have further to uh, report to us, Mr. Kelly? Uh, it's just a consensus. If there's any, if there's any further desire to seek other RFPs other than the document rather. Okay, well, let's just hold that in abeyance from uh, for a minute. Now, uh, the request for the uh, investment information that you have provided here is uh, what you you wish to do with the um, with the bond that we make settlement uh, with on the 26th uh, on the 31st. Um, Am I missing the sheet as to what we do with monies already in house? No, Ms. Wiggle, that is the last sheet that I have. Okay. The last sheet here is going to show where our current total funding is. 
Okay. Why don't you continue on and explain that to everybody? And we'll hold your request. Mr. Kelly, are any of these uh, are any of these uh, investment decisions being uh, handled or being uh, referred to uh, to any other party? Is there anybody being paid a fee for this sort of advice? Absolutely no fee. What, what I try to do is I call and get the best rate. Uh, I can't I can't say it, as I uh, explained earlier. I can't say that there's not a fee involved. But when you call each financial institution and get their best rate and go with that best rate not paying any additional fee on top of that. It would be the same way as uh, when you're dealing with the bank in your own personal investing. You would look for the best the best interest rate you're going to get from that bank. Okay, and you're, you're, you're calling how many banks as you uh, invest this money? You're calling how many banks as comparison? Well, I'm, I'm normally calling three. The best rates we've been getting, as you can see, are, are really fleeted, prudential, and the liquid asset fund. One of the problems uh, back in the, back in 1972, the state passed what they called the, uh, the pooling agreement. What that did is it, it prevented what happened, say, out in Orange County, California, from happening in the state. Uh, we cannot invest public funds with anybody who doesn't collateralize that money, which means they have to have that money uh, free uh, in, in addition to what's invested of ours, so that if anything happened, that, that money would be there, that we would not lose a dime of public money. So many banks want to deal with us, but when you explain to them and make them, they have to sign that they will agree to abide by the Act 72 pooling agreement, that's when they back off and they, in many cases change their, they would lower their rates because they have to hold what we invest with them uh, as uninvested funds in their bank. Uh, and one other question. Yes, PFM. We were paying PFM for a fee to invest bond money. That's Off the top of your head, do you know last year, the year before, do you have a dollar amount of money that we were spending in fees to those people? How long has PFM been with the board? If Mr. Sher is right and it's 89, it's a, it's a year to year total. If you would provide, if you would provide 89, 90, et cetera, et cetera, on how much we were paying to in fees for that firm to um, invest our bond money. And you're telling us that this firm will do it at no charge. That's correct. They will set up the, they will set up the bond fund. Uh, also, as, as we requested, uh, the way it was set up before, we did not have access to the checking account. They all set it up so that, that this district has access to the checking account and will also provide us with the necessary statements that are needed. And Mr. Boyd, your folks are ready to take that over. Correct. Okay, questions around on finance, Mr. Mosey. Uh, you already asked one of my questions. I'd like to see what the fees were. Secondly, I guess this falls under finance, but back in November we got a green sheet outlining the uh, budget calendar. 
I'd like to know where we are because uh, as uh, we're getting very close to January 6th, the budget material should be coming back to the directors from the various mm -hmm. directors and principals. You guys are on that. Yes, that's correct, Mr. Mosey. All the information is out to the school. They are filling it out as we speak, as we sit here, and everyone's aware that it's due back January 6th. Thank you. As far as and we told them all how important it is to stay on that schedule. Mr. Mosey, I'm also aware that there's already, I know of at least three cabinet members uh, as we speak who have already been meeting with their folks, uh, pulling their budget matters together. Thank you very so much. I know it's in action in uh, various departments. We'll make sure we stay on schedule and get an early jump on this issue. Absolutely. Mr. Allen? No, no question. Mr. Clemens? No. Mr. Hill? No question. Mrs. Krieger? No. Mrs. Scher? You need to speak up. Can you account, Dennis? Yes, ma'am. Does this have an administrative fee associated to it? Absolutely not. We do not pay any administrative fees on our investments. Okay, that ended with the money? The money? Yeah. Well, that ended with, that's correct. When, when the, I go back and look at the Emmaus account. That was set up by PFM as, as some type of arbitrage or uh, state management account that had some type of also a fee associated. That is also one of the fees I will provide in Okay. Are you planning? I thought just for you to touch on that there was two different references to directors and I did mention to Dennis that it could cause some confusion that he in some cases he's referring to directors as administrative cabinet versus board of directors so that earlier date and that's one thing you need to clarify with cabinet versus when you reference the board we, we come in I believe around the, Third week of February. Third week of February is when we would be meeting with our as our liaison with our our uh, administrative directors. And we we've, we've instructed everyone to be cool, to be very specific <coughs> in what they're ordering in the budget. We've explained to them that everything will, will be checked very closely by the, the uh, cabinet when it comes in. So I think everyone's quite aware. Okay. Mr. Schilling. Okay. Thank you. Personnel has no report. Legislative, Mrs. Schur. Uh, Mrs. Did I, did I, does that mean that Dr. Bradbury is My apology. My apology. Let me seek the consensus. Now, starting to the right, Mr. Schilling, you're okay with Dauphin and Bradbury for the investment at the time of settlement? I have no difficulty continuing this at this time. Mrs. Krieger. Hill. Clements. Fine. Fine. Allen. Yes. Yeah, Mosey. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kelly, in the event that the board would become dissatisfied, there is an opportunity to make changes, I'm, I'm sure? Okay, so this is what we are going to do as of December 31st. Okay. They'll bring forward some kind of uh, a more tangible recommendation of that investment. Right? Oh, yes, they will. With that bond investment. In so fact, in speaking with Mr. Bradbury yeah. today, he's, he's writing that up right now, and that will be part of his plan on making sure you get uh, each board member gets a copy of the closing statements of the bond issue, and that will be part of those closing Okay, I, just so that the words aren't aren't getting slippery, it's the settlement sheet the settlement that this board right. wishes. Okay. okay. Alrighty, thank you. Mr. Schur and Mr. Kelly, thank you very much. Mr. Boyd. Okay, legislative, Mr. Schur. Okay, thank you. <coughs> North Monco Technical Career Center, before we have a report, uh, I am in need of a motion to appoint Mr. Allen to a new term, another term, to the uh, North Monco Technical Career Center JOC Board. So if somebody would offer a motion at that time, Mr. Mosey, thank you for the motion. Mr. Schilling, thank you for the second. Any questions? Bill, you want the job, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. <laughs> I know nobody else does. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's not true. That's a hot board. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Thank you, Bill, thank for you serving. Thank you. Okay, North Monco Technical, Technical Career Center. I know two of you had a lovely dinner the other night. Yes, we missed you. Yeah. I bet. I bet you missed me. Go ahead. We had the annual um, full member board meeting, dinner meeting, on Monday night, um, which was always, or as usual, very nice. Um, this is important. We had an action meeting afterwards. We uh, elected our own board officers. Um, we are moving forward with the addition to the Vote Tech School. The plan con process is continuing. The uh, architect was expecting to get approval from Tal Menson to go ahead 
and the sum total is they expect to be able to go out for bid for construction in January. If everything goes as they hope it's going, we will start the bid process in January. End of report. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mosey, anything to add? No, just that I would uh, once again this year, as I did last year, like to thank those students. It was, Absolutely. Uh, it was a very enjoyable evening. And, uh, uh, my wife has come to expect to go to this. <laughs> okay, any board questions? Mrs. Krieger. I just have one question that I need to clarify because I was also there and I enjoyed myself uh, with you as well. When the architect got up and gave his presentation to us about the project, he was talking in particular um, about how they were going to guarantee the construction costs of their project. They were talking about their bidding process and they mentioned a specific type of bidding that they were going to do to maintain those construction costs so that they would not go over the price that they had told all the school districts, you know, that this, this project would cost so they're not ever going to come back to us and say we need more money. And I was just curious in relationship to their project, what that bidding process was in particular that they're going to do because I would like this board to do the same in relationship to our projects coming it's up. It's very simple. You, you make a project and you design your project with a lot of options to be taken out. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you get your totals from your, your contractors yeah. and you take out those items that you just deem that you can get rid of and get down to that number. It, it's giving things up. But That's basically, they, there's no. Weren't they talking about um, putting those items out for bid so that they could get Best the price. least right. yes. alternate bid for right. the nuggets? They're alternate. They call them alternate bids. Yeah. Yes. Are we allowed to do that? Yes. Sure. Absolutely. We do. We do. We do that all the time. We do? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're doing well, it with the high school sure project. Has. The advantage they have, Mrs. Krieger, is when they take an alternate bid in this project, and I talked today with Dr. Irwin, they have the luxury, if they have to bump it out because of cost, if they do it in the hospital the construction crew. So that's that's what they're planning on doing. I mean, even if they have to preclude having an outside contractor do some of the items, they will do them in house. And of course, that's the advantage when you have a plumbing shop and a masonry shop. And Trace, I think it's something else to mention too. They they mentioned during our meeting, uh, which was no detail because we asked some specific questions. Um, they're not looking at, and they're hoping they won't have to uh, eliminate anything. That's. That's why they're, they're going with that type of bidding because they, they want to, in fact, there, there may be another program coming up that's going to force them to, uh, a program they're going to take on as far as education concern, which they may have to make some modifications, but um, there, there's, no, there, there's no intent at this point in time. They will bring anything before the JOC that has to be changed or altered uh, you know, further on down the process, but at this point in time, uh, they're, they're not planning on, on uh, you know, dropping anything. Okay. Any further comments? Okay. Fire report, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Allen and Mr. Mosey. Mark Science Partnership. Mr. Weiss isn't here. Mr. Schilling? Yes, I have a report. Certainly. All, uh, all of our elementary schools will be involved with science, math, technology events during this year, and some schools had initial activities during the last month. Bridal Pad <coughs> had uh, the first of those three science nights. This one's targeted fifth and sixth grade students and their parents. Upcoming events are scheduled in January at Glendore, Hatfield, Walton Farm, and Montgomery. We have begun the selection of staff members to join a curriculum writing team to finalize our current science curriculum in line with school district uh, standards, the new state standards, and national standards. Grade level, uh, grade le grade level uh, teams of leader teachers now in the process developing new assessments are being supported by the Merck Institute and district staff. These assignments, assessments rather, are aligned with our, our science and mathematics programs and when completed, will be offered to grade level colleagues for use in their own classrooms. 
Many of the Merck volunteers working in our schools were recently honored for their contributions to students. At this gathering, uh, Dr. Bose and others thanked this dedicated group for their impact on our children's learning of science and math and encouraged their uh, continued work. End of report. Thank you, Mr. Schilling. Any questions for Mr. Schilling? <coughs> I just would like to make a question the science curriculum is that going to be the science curriculum is finishing uh, what it had started a couple of years ago, and it has been in transition, so they'll be working toward closure. But with the PSSA changes, they will probably still be working through this through the end of next year. So what they're talking about in the report is taking a look at the, um, the national standards and the new standards, which are part of that commission again, that is at PDE, which is paralleling what the state standards would be and the national standards and trying to move them into where we're going with this science program. And I will be involved. Okay, okay thank you. Any further questions? All righty. Thank you, Mr. Schilling. Long range planning. Tom Clemens, Donna Mengel, Vicki Scher, and David Weitz. But why don't we just defer over to Dr. Mangano? Is that okay, Mr. Clemens? Okay. Go right ahead. I think I gave you all the information today that we wanted to give you. And again, if there's anything new that's coming down the pike, we'll certainly make sure that you have it. Keep the rest of anything that is current and changing. But I do have currently everything that we have that I have in terms of uh, standards and what information we've been giving to the state. The only thing that uh, we're waiting to hear for sure on is our uh, changes in the revisions of PSSA testing and the changes that will affect the curriculum as we move forward, uh, curriculum reviews and plan courses that will be affected also in the budget process. But more will be coming when we bring that forward. Okay. And any of the sample legalese uh, recommendations that come down from Governor Rich, you will get to the solicitor? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mangano. Any questions? Dr. Mangano on the long range plan? Okay. Other assignments? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. May, Please. I would like to inform the board that last Friday, December 13th, the Oversight Committee had a meeting uh, concerning the high school edition. Uh, the process is moving forward and that uh, you will be receiving a report. A report to report. report Good to for you. Report. Belt and suspenders, that's all right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mosey. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if I could direct your attention to the uh, cover sheet on tonight's agenda, you will see that uh, effective January for the 1997 year through December of um, 97, we have a uh, new board um, liaison responsibilities. In the past, we had gone with a, um, a chairman or a liaison and an alternate, uh, as opposed uh, the first name listed under each committee would uh, essentially be the lead person, but sometimes with everybody's day-to-day -day schedule and the, the busy lives that are held by everybody up here on the board, it isn't always possible to make some of the meetings and uh, during the day and to check in as uh, uh, as necessary and uh, therefore these committees need a few more people or a few more uh, board members assigned to them and uh, a, a good example would be uh, facilities buildings and grounds uh, we have three gentlemen on that committee and uh, more times than not mr. Mosey is capable of meeting during the daytime where uh, mr. Clemens and uh, mr. Schilling are are often trapped on their jobs and cannot uh, take phone calls immediately or, or, or make day visits that Mr. Mosey can. Um, the whole point of these committees is that everybody works cooperatively and whoever has their name first would essentially be the one responsible for providing committee reports. I would think that everybody on each committee would be as knowledgeable on, is on each issue involving the committee as uh, the lead person. Community services and policy has been expanded. Uh, I've been added to that committee. It is a wish of this committee that we look at uh, the school calendar and some suggestions that have been made by cabinet members that need to possibly be integrated into our calendar, um, MPTV, and uh, publications that come forth from the district. Facilities, buildings, and grounds is an ever-growing responsibility and has needed uh, more help. And uh, Tom Clements will join that committee with uh, John Schilling and Pat Mosey. Uh, personnel pretty well remains the same. K through 12 curriculum is lining up with the new assistant superintendent that will be with us shortly. Uh, in the past, we had elementary and secondary. I would like to see Mrs. Krieger and Mr. Allen work 
collectively with Dr. Hassler and provide an integrated K through 12 approach to curriculum and reporting. If uh, Mrs. Krieger and Mr. Allen wish to split up those duties as they were in the past, that's between them and they should discuss that and just be, be ready to provide the board with uh, and the community with uh, answers and reports. Uh, finances, Vicki Schur and Pat Mosey. Technology has been expanded because Mr. Weitz has carried this load by himself for a long time and, and uh, that's to his credit. Uh, but it, I also recognize that, that he could use a little help. Mr. Weitz will continue to lead that committee. Uh, Tom Clements, Don Hill, and Pat Mosey will be added to that committee. Special Education and Student Services, Mrs. Krieger and Mr. Allen. Support Services, Mr. Allen and Mr. Weitz. High School Expansion, Pat Mosey, Vicki Schur, Tom Clemens, and John Schilling. Mr. Clemens, you're new to that committee. And that's to connect with the facilities, buildings, and grounds. Legislative is uh, Vicki Schur and Sharice Krieger. Uh, again, uh, that will be a shared responsibility because that's another meeting night and uh, both of you ladies can work that out. Long range planning, uh, Donna Mengel, Don Hill, Vicki Scher, David Weitz, meet and discuss will be uh, Mr. Hill and myself as board officers. Merck Science Partnership, Mr. Weitz and Mr. Schilling again. <coughs> Municipal Relations has added uh, John Schilling and that's a committee that needs to start back up again even if it's to meet uh, for general purposes with municipal officers. And North Monco Te Technical Career Center, we have added Mr. Allen for a new term and uh, on uh, still remaining on term is myself and Mr. Mosey. So here's the new list. I, I'd asked, um, does any board member have a problem with their, uh, as part of this face sheet, your phone number being listed on here so that when audience members come that they have access to not only who has what committee, but they have your phone number if they would need to call you? It's public knowledge. Do you have a problem? <laughs> Mr. Allen's speed number dial is... <laughs> His beeper. Okay. Um, Mrs. Hatfield, will you please note for the record that uh, I've requested the board secretary to include the board members' phone numbers on the face sheet as a standard boilerplate from here forward. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being patient with us. It is now your turn. Under audience of citizens, I ask that you come forward, state your name, your address, and uh, feel free to address any uh, topic you wish. And the new time limit, as you well know, is five minutes. Anybody wish to speak to the board tonight? Mrs. Clark. Karen Clark, Montgomery Township. I have a question about the research policy. The research policy. At the bottom where it says um, the superintendent will maintain records um, of, of research projects that are happening, is will the district keep a copy of the concluded research? And does that need to be included in? You know, maintaining a record says that um, Dr. So and so is doing a multicultural research project. That's maintaining a record, but will, when that gets concluded, will the district have a copy of whatever it was that that research was? The final product. Right. That's the way I would, I would interpret and administer the policy, Mrs. Clark. Yes. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Two answers are better than one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else, please? Madam. Mrs. Orr, you're on deck. Okay. That's all right. No, no, no. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, Mary Catherine with Tomlinson Township. Uh, I have a couple of questions, if I may. I was not able to attend the meeting where you discussed the bonds, but I did watch it on television, and I was a little confused. I have a question for Mr. Kelly. I understood that you said that there had been some money in the bond issue initially for several small projects, uh, but then that wasn't included in the final bond issue because you were able to find that money elsewhere in the budget? Uh, yes, Ms. Woodworth. Uh, what the board, uh, after the board reviewed those projects and determined that there was money in the current fund balance to fund those projects rather than going to the fund. So you were able to find it in the money that we have now? That's correct. My question is, if you can find money for those projects in the budget, why couldn't we find money for the other 30 teacher aides or other 20 teacher aides that we needed to help the overcrowded classrooms? 
I was told that we didn't have the money for the additional aids to put in the classrooms. And if there's extra money in the budget and we can use it for that, why couldn't we have used it for uh, uh, teacher I, aids? I would refer to uh, Dr. Miller. We did find some money in the budget for some of the aids. Yes. Yes. That, that was done. Right, but we hired only 11, and we have something like 35 classrooms which are overcrowded and need aids. Okay. Well, there, was, there was a link uh, to what we could take out of that fund now. We, we, tried to, we tried to spend as much as possible. But there must have still been money there because you took it out for, out for these other projects. That's what I was Mr. Kelly, to give Mrs. Whitworth the, the amounts of money in question. I know it's one of them, Mrs. Whitworth. It's, it's 164,000 or something. Okay. That would buy a lot of teacher aids. That money was always spent, Mrs. Whitmer. And what happened, Mr. Kelly was coming to us to ask us to put that money in the bond issue to reimburse the general fund. And it was the board's position that since that money was already spent over the period of the year, uh, that it was not necessary to, to burden the, 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 the uh, community with, with the 20 year bond for those expenditures. Some of them were, for example, a $5,000 recoding of a driveway. To put that on a 20-year bond, you had to spend a $15,000. Oh, I totally agree with that. Yeah. I just think that sometimes we're able to find money for things like that, and we're not able to find money for the overcrowded classrooms, and that concerns If I'm not mistaken, I think we hired 11 aides, wasn't it, Mrs. Miller? Yes, we did. And we only hired 11 because that was the recommendation that was brought to this board, was we only needed 11 aides at that time. I don't know where the figure 30 or 35 came from. That's how many overcrowded classrooms we have well, in we, we were only told to vote on 11, and that's what we hired with 11 as per the okay, administration's Mr. recommendation. I, I know that, but when I questioned why you're only getting 11 instead of one for each classroom, which is overcrowded, the answer I was given was that's all we have money for. That's, that's, that's correct. And, and the, the uh, expansion of that uh, explanation referred directly to the line item accounts from which those funds would come. Two accounts, the teacher salary account and the teacher aid salary account. And in those two accounts, in September, now we're talking, this is, you know, five months later, where we, we know a lot more about the budget, but in September, what we knew then was we had approximately $43,000. And um, was it 76000 in the other account? That accounted for the 11 teacher aides. Mm -hmm. And there was no other funds in those two accounts except that total balance. But the board has the power to move things from one account to the other, correct? I mean, if there was extra money in another section of the Yes, that's and that's, that's I don't want to take my whole time on that. My point is, I think if we put our priorities in the classroom where I think they should be, we have classrooms where we have 35 children in a fifth grade math class and no aid there. And I think that we need to do something about that. But How many of you? I guess I need some clarification. Where is there a math class in this district? Fifth grade that has 35 children in the school? They're on a circle. But I'll have to ask the people to do something else. 35. And that's it. I believe at Nash also, I don't know. although I'm not 100% sure of that. Okay, uh, one moment. Yeah. I'm, go I'm going to write down Nash and I'm going to write down Inglewood, and Dr. Bose is going to check first thing tomorrow on that count as to the accuracy for both of our benefits. And we, we will look into that, I promise you. Thank you. I just have a couple of questions. Who is in charge of the Nash. program in the district now? Oh, so Dr. McGann is not doing that anymore. No, we, we, uh, the responsibilities for gifted education is spread among the four supervisors of special education, and they serve buildings this year rather than particular programs. Okay, so Dr. McGann is in charge of the long-range planning, the multicultural committee still, yes. and interns. Staff development. Staff development. Yes. Uh, Dr. McDaniel is a fantastic person. I have yes. tremendous respect. She's absolutely amazing. But I, I wonder if she's not going to be an overload doing all of those jobs at one time. That seems like a lot for one person to do. Uh, that was just a comment also. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is I read in the paper and saw at the board meeting that you're going to be reviewing the BASE program uh, and considering whether or not you want to uh, renew that contract. I was on the original 
committee of mm -hmm. citizens who spent over a year reviewing uh, programs, after school programs, and visiting after school programs. And I just would like to say, if you are going to bring it up for review again, I would hope that you, you would reconvene that committee and use that expertise and that research that we did, because we spent a lot of time uh, researching that initially. And my last thing is, do you have a date on which you're going to vote on the technology bond? You took the bond out. Can you give us a date that you'll be ready to vote on the technology bond? Mrs. Whitworth, we haven't taken out a bond as of yet for technology. I know, that's what I'm we are we intend uh, to take out a small a short term note for uh, technological needs in the district, which still need to be determined. We are waiting uh, on Mr. Weir for a full report from the technology uh, committee and those uh, responsible for technology here in the district. And that uh, report has not uh, come forward. We're expect we were expecting it in January. I, January, Dr. Post, February. January, February. It should then one. be on the agenda. So once that report comes in, then you'll be voting on the additional funding for technology in the district. The report will go through a work session, and it'll go through the usual, uh, you know, litany of questions and re-questions. And uh, from that point, it'll be determined how much uh, the board wishes to spend in those areas. Hopefully, it'll be uh, a, a phase-in program, as we have many expenditures, large expenditures in the district, one, two, three phases, whatever it takes. Uh, but that's the finance decision will come through not only the finance uh, process, but also the work session process with the uh, technology report itself. So we could expect some kind of action in early spring? I believe it has to come through with this budget. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Whitworth. Mrs. Orr. My name is Joanne Orr. I reside in Lansdale. Uh, my question is concerning the expansion of the high school. Uh, is there a forthcoming, more itemized um, cost list from the resident? Mr. Wood. Other than what's initial, initially? Okay. The, we're moving to the process of the uh, design development, and at that point, we will have more detail as it relates to cost, but we also have more detail on the building as to what's going into the space. Is it going to have the dis disabled front door? Disabled front door, I can assure you. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I ask the board if they would consider expanding the audience of citizens by having a phone, a phone in? Mrs. Orr, we are going to assign your request to. Uh, let me get that committee. <laughs> let me get. Technology. Well, technology can share it. Uh, community services and policy. We're going to give it to Ken Weir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Abrams. Please note that for Mr. Weir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with regards to the elementary um, policy that you approved, I wondered when the public could expect some clarification on how the classrooms will be utilized in September, how the modulars are going to um, affect those classrooms in certain buildings who are not getting modulars, who have the overcrowded classroom settings. In other words, when will the details of all of that come to pass? I assume that we are looking at, um, if I could ask Mr. Wood, the, the completion of some of those modulars by September of next year. Is our hope. That's correct. Uh, we're working as a committee with Mrs. Clark, with Dr. Sugar, and Dr. Bose. Uh, and at this point, we have already made the decision that we will be putting two modulars at Montgomery and we will be putting two modulars at Nash. We've already talked with the municipality in the planning process. Uh, Dr. Sugar and Mrs. Clark and Dr. Bose will move forward as to the direction we need at, at, as it relates to placing the additional four modules. Okay, so the four modules at Inglewood are not a definite? Well, no, that's still still a very good possibility, but we're looking we're looking at some other other options at the moment to come back and possibly suggest to the group. Okay. Mrs. Abram, we're, that is being undertaken presently. 
as well as anticipating what neighborhoods might be reassigned as a result of the availability of modulars and the effort to balance and limit the enrollment growth. Uh, and we ex I, would, I would say in direct answer to your question about when might you expect to see or hear something about that, I would think no later than March. Okay. Because, for instance, our building, again, uh, speaking personally at Wynn North, we have so many students there this year and we only anticipate more next year that we are assured a classroom or two. So I, I think in terms of even staff training and, and getting prepared for next year in terms of their own knowledge of, of what's happening, that it would be helpful. So March is, is your target date for letting people know what's happening at that mm -hmm. point. Okay. With regards to middle school, um, and, and again, I'm, I'm talking specifically about um, hiring of staff and um, the number of children anticipated for September of next year, again, specifically talking about Pembroke, where my child is. Um, I know that there were some issues regarding this year on um, children getting in certain classes or not getting in certain classes, um, and there were X number of staff and so on and so forth. Um, is the public aware, I'm trying to remember back in all the meetings that I attend, when does that process occur? I don't know, maybe Mrs. May can help, help me with that. Um, in terms of um, knowing what the number of children are going to be available in the middle schools for next year, and the number of staff, and, and the number of students per classes, that kind of thing, class ratio. Are you talking about course schedule? Yes, yes. Usually course selection occurs for each grade at a different time, beginning of January, February, March, um, <coughs> and sometimes in the year of start of April, but usually March is the last month, and all of those um, all of those course selections are then tallied because as you are aware, the students who are currently in sixth grade will be moving to seventh grade and they have to take the time to do whatever testing is necessary in math, as you know, for accelerated math. Um, and once that is all completed and all the course selections are done, then the tallies are, are all the information is entered into the computers and the tallies are done. And then principals are able to take a look at that information and uh, see what their needs are. Okay. I would ask that as the board approach, approaches that with the administration, um, <clears throat> that, is, that we look seriously to, obviously, uh, as I recall, sixth grade coming in to the middle school is a larger class than what is leaving in ninth grade um, and subsequent years that's, that's happening. Um, I would ask that as we look at the numbers, and we consider the, the true reality of the fact that we may need additional staff in some of these buildings, and again, this goes for elementary as well, but I'm sure at the high school and the middle, that we may need additional staff because I believe our numbers, uh, I know my son has a math class, uh, it's an honors math program, he's having a wonderful experience, but he has 32 kids in his math class in Pembroke. So it's a good class, it's a good teacher, it's going really well, but I would hate to see that as the norm. And I understand that, you know, that is possible in some situations, and I'm lucky that it's working well, but I would ask that we consider, as we get these growing numbers of children coming to our ranks, that the board consider the need for additional staff hiring as we go through this process. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Abrams. Uh, does uh, Bert Hines help with any of the scheduling? In the middle school? Yes. No. No. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Abrams. He's pretty good with the scheduling. I don't know if he, there's time to be able to utilize him, but he certainly can. I know at the high school he's been able to 100% uh, efficiency right. set up. All right, thank you, Mrs. Miller. Yes, ma'am. My name is Carol Davis, and I live in Tomlinson. In early December, I received two days of in-service training in the fact in the school district on the computer curriculum corporation program for students in grades kindergarten through eighth grade. <coughs> During the first of those two days, I learned that the school district in which I teach, in the back in the school district, or a neighboring district, has made a commitment to purchase over the next three years 1,200 new IBM computers. Since last year, every elementary school child spends 12 minutes a day in math, and this year another 12 minutes a day in language arts as well, on one of six computers which are located in every elementary school classroom. As part of the Lehigh University study, elementary students were tested in September last year, and again seven months later with the Stanford Achievement Test in Mathematics. The anticipated growth over that seven-month period was expected to be an average of seven months. 
Instead, across the board, grades one through five, students showed 20 month gains in mathematics. Technology works. We need it here in North Penn. When are we going to keep up with technology in this district? And I did hear you refer to that just a few minutes ago, Ms. Nangle. We must, in order to keep our children competitive in, with children of other school districts. In the past, I pleaded for consideration for the sake of the children. Unfortunately, those pleas, from my perspective, often seem to, to fall on deaf ears. And so now, I make a plea as a taxpayer and a homeowner in this district. Like many of us, I cannot afford to see my primary investment, my home. I cannot, I cannot afford to see the value of that primary investment plummet. Recently, in the December 96 Smart Money Magazine, the national magazine put up by the Wall Street Journal, our district received national attention that once again we can ill afford. If we fall grossly behind in technology, we will lose in more ways than one. I have copies of the article if anybody on the board hasn't seen it. Yes, we would. If you want to get we would like it. We would like it. Excuse me, Mrs. Davis, can I just ask you a quick question for clarification? You mentioned that there were 20 month gains seen in math K through 5. What were the gains? First, 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 first through 8. Oh, first through 5. Sure. What were the gains seen in math 6th, 7th, and 8th grade? We're just implementing the computers into our middle school. Okay. So each each regular ed classroom has received two computers. Math has received six, but we're not really up and running yet on the middle school level. Okay. okay so that Thank you. Mr. Davis, I have a question. How did the, the, the students with these computers compare to our students in regards to testing at that level? I don't know. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Davis. Mrs. Davis, thank you very much. Mr. Kelly, if you would, in light of what Mrs. Sure, no, Davis no, reported no, to us tonight, no, would you call no, and no, see no, if you no. can get the budget details on the 1,200 IBMs that they're going to be purchasing over three years from their finance director, please? No, no, thank you. And I think Mr. White's, uh, that should be sent to Mr. White's and his technology committee. Mrs. Mrs. Davis, thank you. Yeah, how they pay, how they'll pay for it. Okay. All righty, thank you. Anybody else? Ms. Sokalski. Okay. I noticed in our immediate uh, agendas we're not getting the uh, background we used to on the teacher new hires. It, it used to be very limited, but at least it was some sketchy information on the background, and I'd like to see that uh, instituted again. And I remain concerned that uh, I'd like to see us hire uh, additional numbers of teachers from the better colleges. It's, from what I've heard, we get about 100 applicants for every job, and sometimes I look at where uh, our staff went to school, and I wonder why we can't do better. Uh, I'm also concerned that we are continuing um, to hire people as theme readers. I think this is part of the English teacher's job. I think it's important for the English teachers to see the work that the students are doing, and I question why um, the board uh, decided some time ago to pay people to read the themes instead of letting English teachers do it. Uh, to comment on the um, base issue, um, which I discussed uh, when the board had this under consideration at the workshop, I do want to clarify that contrary to what the administration said that night, and, and quoting from the base uh, sheet that is given to parents, quote, we are open on some but not all school holidays. This means that we are uh, essentially opening schools for base on days when the children otherwise would not be in the building. I cannot see that the rate we're paid for those days of 40 or so dollars a day is in any way beginning to compensate the district for the cost of opening those buildings, heating them, the other utilities, and the custodian's time. Uh, I have, again, with these new figures I have, going through 
the base numbers as best I could uh, in terms of what I uh, believe comes in intuition, what the salary charges are. I have been very generous in adding extra staff at each school, and I still come up with a profit each year approaching a quarter of a million dollars. You heard other requests tonight for computers, for additional staff, uh, for uh, classroom aides, and I think we could do quite a bit with a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, I think our present fee of $18.70 a day is ludicrous. It in no way compensates us for what I believe are the actual cost of running this program. And I think we are entitled, as uh, the taxpayers are essentially the property owners of these buildings, I think the taxpayers and the parents are entitled to some reasonable return on our dollars. Certainly in the uh, commercial real estate market, base would be paid far, far higher than $18.70. Probably something with utilities and everything, furniture and everything included, probably something in the range of $250 or $300 a day. Uh, I also note that I, I believe we do not charge any additional on the early dismissal days. And again, these are two more hours a day that BASE is using our schools. I would also like to ask if there's any way we could get some kind of bond that whoever is running the BASE program uh, would have to uh, take out that the district would be held harmless in the case of an accident or some other mishap during the uh, base activities. Uh, I don't think this is quite the same as when we rent schools to other organizations who simply are renting a building for uh, a one time or once a month or something used. This is something that goes on every day and by uh, hiring or subcontracting this to a particular provider, we're essentially giving that provider our seal of approval. And I think uh, should any kind of lawsuit occur over an accident, I think North Penn would be liable as well as the provider. And I am aware that the provider does have liability insurance. Um, I have one other item I want to discuss, and that is the negotiations with the teacher's contract, which I guess will be starting again shortly. And I would like to urge the board to go with an outside negotiator. I've always been concerned in the past when we've had our director of personnel handle this, because first of all, it puts him or her in an awkward position uh, during the life of the contract when they then have to deal on a daily basis with the union. And since we traditionally give uh, whatever salary increase percentages and benefit increases the union gets to the administration, the uh, director of personnel is, in a sense, indirectly negotiating his own salary and benefits, and I'd like us to go outside for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Olkowski. In regards to the things that you've said, details on hirings will be provided because they already are, but they should be placed with the agenda uh, for the um, for the public. It's not uh, personal, personal information. It's uh, information that we're proud of, and making that public is appropriate. Theme readers is an area that will come up at budget time, and it gets discussed every year. It will be discussed again this year, <coughs> theme readers. As far as a bond that would hold us harmless, I'm not so sure if that's legit or if you can even hold anybody harmless nowadays because it doesn't stop you from being named in a suit, but we will run that by the solicitor. Uh, negotiations using an outside negotiator, that will be discussed by the board and it's probable will be with an outside negotiator. Okay, thank you. Anybody else, please? Anybody? Thank you so much. Dr. Bose. The first recommendation the board's considering the, this evening uh, relates to a question that was posed earlier having to do with uh, curriculum choices that uh, our students will make and uh, for at least for uh, those in grades 9 through 12, the board is considering tonight the recommendation to approve the 1997-98 program of studies. Uh, with the changes noted on item 122-96 and as reviewed in its entirety by the board at the December 10 meeting. Motion by Krieger, second by Schilling. Questions starting to the left, Mr. Mosey? No questions. No. Mr. Allen. No. No. no questions. Krieger. <coughs> sure. Yes, question. I'd like to know if the 97-98 program of studies 
if any of these changes are uh, done, uh, bringing with them any requir uh, staffing requirements? Staffing changes associated with the changes? Not the curriculum changes, uh, but certainly our estimate of the enrollments when you deal with that at budget time will be the time for you to know it's and part consider. of our numbers, but right. I meant sometimes courses themselves are driving because no, these courses the area don't require any specialists with certifications right. we don't already have. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I was not present for that meeting and I don't know whether that was right. brought up or discussed, but I wanted to clear it up. Yep. You. Mr. Schilling. Okay, everybody needs to speak up a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Thank you. The next recommendation is uh, seeks your approval for a contract uh, for discrete tri trial training. This is ser service for a handicapped child whose name is on file in the Department of Student Services at an annual cost of 2160. That's all right. You're still moving? Okay. Motion by Mosey? Second. Second by Krieger. <coughs> to the right. Mr. Schilling? Sure. Can you just ask it, since this is something new, that you, this is really your first year's experience with this, I believe. Yeah. Is this how many of the third? Is this the third? Is this, exactly. this is just the second. Um, how, how, is, how are things following up on this as you and going through this experience? Mm -hmm. Without being specific, yeah. but I mean, I assume you're in a process of evaluating. We are evaluating. Um, we're learning as we go along. It, it has appeared to be successful in, in cases where it's been utilized. And I can provide the board with more information about data as we go on this year. And I assume that this is just an initial expense that the year 2160. Is that what you expect for the full year? Remaining for the year? It depends on, on the particular student, what that student's needs are, and it will vary as to the amount of time. This is the current Or we're contracting accounts and with, with a private therapist. Private therapist? So on their trained. property, though, they don't come in? They will come in for the meetings, and then there's a coordination with the phone also. Right. Well, let us know a little bit more about this. See how much you think this is going to go for the services. Mr. Krieger? No. Mr. Hill? I don't know, maybe answer the question over there because I couldn't really hear that conversation oh, hear you. at all. But just define for me what trial training is. I don't, that, that's a terminology I'm not familiar with. It's, it's a system or a therapy for acquiring appropriate behaviors and learning. And it's used with children who have some severe impairments in that particular area. And it, it's for any type of behavior, from a very low level behavior, such as responding or looking to a higher level behavior. There's a full continuum. And it, it's used with uh, some children who have autism and others. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Clemens. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mosey. Just one question, uh, Mrs. Park. Do we receive any state aid in regard to this program, or is this? We have provide, pro, uh, we have written grants, provisional grants, for some additional aid for this because this is something new. We should be hearing from the state. They told us in January they would let us know what amount of money was approved. We sent in for over four hundred thousand dollars in grant money. I'm hoping to use the for that. Now you're saying grant money. Is this going to be another situation where the state's contribution will decrease over the years and our contribution will increase, or we have to apply for this grant money they every have, year? They have had contingency funds in the state for the last four years. We were successful one year in getting the funding. Now, we don't know how they decide how you get the funding because we applied for things that other districts did. They got it, we didn't. One year we got it, they didn't. So we're, we're hoping that we did not get any last year. We're hoping this year we'll qualify for it. We've written over the past several years over $600,000 for grant money. So we keep applying and we will continue to do that. Hopefully for this particular therapy that they will see this as an extraordinary expense. Is this a state mandated program? It's not state mandated because each child has an individualized program, so it's part of the child's program. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All in favor would say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Thank you. The next recommendation seeks your approval 
for transportation services uh, for our students attending Lakeside Youth Services uh, who are enrolled in the program or will be enrolled in the program. The rate would be $12 per student per day from January 2 uh, through June of 1997. The number of students uh, would range from 30 to 50 throughout the remainder of the school year. So moved. Motion by Hill. Second. Second by Schilling. Starting to the left, Mr. Mosey. Uh, yes. Um, I, I got a copy of your green sheet, Mr. Thank you. I beg your pardon, Mr. Wood. No. I, I said Mrs. Clark because I know when this came up a couple of months right. ago, uh, we had asked you to look into the Lakeside program. Okay, Mr. Wood, do that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, my question was, I went back to the October 8th meeting, and uh, I thought we were going to look at bringing the whole Lakeside program in-house. We are looking to have a committee. Where do, where do we stand with this? We have been meeting. We've had about six meetings. We've heard from different service providers. We will be making a decision and hopefully have that in place next year. You will be bringing those reports of recommendation? To the board um, right around budget time. And, uh, <coughs> right, I'm looking back at uh, the October a green sheet where you listed that it's costing us $492 a day per student. And I took that and multiplied that by 180 days and come out to $88,560. And I noticed on the green sheet, maybe there's on the green, oh here it is. Uh, we need $100,000. Yeah. We would need a hundred thousand dollars if we did in house. We'd have to buy five vans for uh, four or five vans for the Okay, so I read that right That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Mr. Mosey. Mr. Allen. Um, I understand is Lakeside moving to school or just her office? Yeah. The school still staying with right. <coughs> No. The office is made the office. moving. I'm not aware of that now but they are not moving to school. Yeah, they're going to Washington. I just wonder if that was going to increase our cost being a further distance. You know, as far as I know, the children that we send to Lakeside in Washington will still be going okay. there. Thank you. Okay, right, Mr. Clements. None. Mr. Hill? None. Mrs. Krieger? I just would like to know from our just a rough idea of what it would cost us to man our own bus to take these children back and forth. That's all explained here. The major problem, Mrs. Krieger, is we don't have the we don't have the vehicles. Number one. No, I understand that. But aside from not having the vehicles, these youngsters are transported with a very special aid, mm -hmm. someone that relates to them at their school all day long, and we really have a great concern about being able to hire that type okay. of person. I mentioned that. Well, I mentioned that on the front of the green sheet about the need to to find. I make it abundantly clear for the Lakeside Youth Services provide specially trained counselors on each van. We would be unable to find aides that have this special training. Oh, I apologize. That's all right. Because we would really be looking for that type of person. It has the special training. We want them an hour and a half in the morning and an hour and a half in the, in the afternoon. Whereas these folks work all day with those youngsters from the time they pick them up in the morning until they deliver them home in the afternoon. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Sure. Only to say that uh, our, I didn't see anything there for outside um, competition, though. So were you evaluated it in-house, but with driver or we also else? We also evaluated it outside, okay. and there was no one willing to transport these youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess this will be an issue to be resolved if we're going to talk about an alternative event coming in-house. We're going to have to make sure we're going to have a way of getting to uh, their in-house education, and it's going to be interesting if we have to the lakeside to take uh, no, we our in-house students to the building. With an in-house okay. program, we will have the type of counselor that deals with this youngster and travels on their vehicle. And the thing we're going to have to face as part of the discussion we've had is the acquisition of the necessary vans to dedicate to this program. 
But I, I have talked to Ryder and I've talked to one other contractor. And, uh, yeah, Mr. Wood is aware that a lot of board members with vans are not to be included in this count. <laughs> right, Mr. Wood? Okay. Mr. Schilling? Okay. All right, all in favor would say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Thank you. Recommendation D is a, a further progress toward the uh, work on the addition of North Penn High School. This is uh, a request that you approve uh, and accept Plan Con Part B schematic design as set forth in the attached letter from the Department of Education dated November 8, 1996. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Schilling, second by Mosey. This is an easy one, folks. We'll start to the right. Mr. Schilling. Mr. Schar. Simply follow up I did on the previous month that we took on someone. Plan Con B. It was a matter of having the vote to submit it to the state. Now the state's returning the bank does with their approval. Right. So we're basically going through one more step on the same right. plan con, correct? It's right. a requirement if you look at the letter from the architect at the state right. level, the last sentence is this document should be entered in the should be in the next record. Sure. Right. But this is still again back where we were when we dealt with plan con B, I believe about two months ago. Right. Except we had our just the volleys back and forth between from the board up to the state now back down. Well, we did have our review on site at the state, sure. which was right. Very good. Okay, Mr. Krieger. There's no changes in the schematic design that we saw. Widen the uh, bus. We we addressed the two issues. Oh, that's right. It's very unusual to go before the state architect and only come away okay. with two recommendations. And uh, we were very pleased with that, and we addressed both of those recommendations. It was part of the former record, too. Okay. Mr. Hill? No questions. Mr. Clements? Mr. Allen? No. Mr. Mosey? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Thank you. Furthermore, further work related to the high school project. This recommendation uh, seeks your approval to engage Earth Engineering Incorporated to perform a geotechnical investigation at North Bend High School which is required uh, in accordance with the request set forth and, and as you can see on item 126-97 there were other uh, interested parties but this is the low quotation. Okay. Motion by Scher, second by Krieger. To the left, Mr. Mosey. Just going to congratulate Mr. Wood on the uh, fine bid process and uh, Mr. Allen? No. Mr. Clemens? No. Hill? Ms. Krieger? One thing is that this is the, the cheapest geotechnical um, bids I've ever seen in my life. That's all I want to say. I'm very pleased with you. Yeah. Mr. Sure. Mr. Schilling? Okay, thank you, Art. Things are getting competitive. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Thank you. F is a recommendation that you accept the gifts as noted made by private donors to our schools, which will become school property with your approval. Motion by Sheriff, second by Schilling. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. On page BA3, we begin with the various uh, personnel items. Uh, the first recommendation is uh, a request that you approve the appointment of two professional staff and eight support staff contained uh, on item item BA or page BA4. Mr. Krieger, are you going to say something? I would just like to know if the board would be willing to separate the professional and the support staff. I, I, I will recommend them separately, Mrs. Krieger. Right. Oh, I, I, I see what you mean. Uh, you can, uh, I certainly uh, uh, know what you're interested in. I would suggest that the president uh, move them individually, take okay. uh, motions individually. Okay. I need a motion for the professional staff list on BA4. So moved. So moved. Motion by Hill, second by Mosey. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, on BA, when do we vote on BA6? Where do they fit in? Okay. Oh, there it is. It comes down later. I'm sorry. That's all right. Stand corrected. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. 
Seeking a motion for support staff on BA4. So moved. Motion Thanks. by Hill, second by Allen. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Nay. Any abstentions? <coughs> Thank you. The next Thank recommendation you. is the recommendation that you accept one support staff retirement as listed on BA4. So moved. Motion by Allen, second by Sher. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Abstentions? Thank you. The resignations are next uh, for your approval. One professional staff as listed on page BA4. Motion by Schilling. Second, Second by Mosey. Questions? Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Ms. Brenda Habersutter has been the Assistant Director of Human Resources for the past four years in North Carolina School District. And she has uh, been a fabulous person to work with, highly professional and highly mm -hmm. competent. She has been recruited to work in human resources in a very high level position in a hospital in New England. And we are going to miss her greatly, I especially. Mm -hmm. And I know that you all join me in saying thank you to her for all of the services Absolutely. she has provided to us. We wish her well. Okay. Yeah. All right, here, here is right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed would say nay. Abstentions? Thank you. There are two salaries uh, corrections for professional staff as listed on BA4 and recommended for your approval. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Allen, second by Mosey. Any questions? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I noticed that, that uh, Ms. McDonald, I see that uh, her salary increase became effective uh, on November the 21st. So this would be the first time that we would have to, to vote on this. Why the delay on this Williams from September to now three months? Well, there was she she is one of the people that earned graduate credit and it was retroactive because of what had happened to, to her salary. I can get that information. When did she earn graduate credit? After September the third? She had that in by October thirty first and that didn't come through with the others. This was effective as of eleven twenty one. The others were effective. No, Miss mm -hmm. Williams, it, oh, it looks like we gave her an increase from 42000 to 46000 in September. Now, three months later, we're being asked to ratify. This is this is a complaint we had when we first came on last year that this was happening. Why the three-month delay to, to ratify her increase? Her salary was incorrectly stated in the beginning, as I recall. She has a specific level that she was paying that should have been receiving a specific salary. And that's the same case with Ms. McDonald as well. Hers is for the credit term. Hers is for addition and salary. Thank you very much. Okay, any further questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Abstentions? Thank you. There are 13 salary changes for support staff uh, listed for your approval on also on page BA5. So moved. Second. Okay, motions by Clemens, second by Hill. Yeah. Uh, Allen. I'm sorry. This is Hatfield. That was Bill Allen on the motion. Mr. Hill. And, sound like Tom Clemens. <laughs> Mr. Hill in the second. I did, yeah. Any questions? I have a question. Yes. Uh, your, what is a sub A to a sub bus driver? I'm a little <laughs> I, I didn't know our bus drivers had AIDS. I thought maybe it was that. We do have, we do have an AIDS. A number an of AIDS that work in the transportation department Shh. and ride on Guys. After they serve uh, on, in that role, many times they opt to get their CDL license. Okay. And they opt to do what is necessary to become a bus driver. So this person is going from a substitute aid position. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. so, oh, okay. Two as a movement. Okay. okay. All right. I thought it was. I thought it was an aid to a substitute <laughs> bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> it says. It says onion layers. You're worried about, right? Okay. Any other questions? 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Abstentions? Thank you. Recommendation two uh, seeks your approval for additions, changes, and deletions to the extracurricular duty assignments for the current school year as presented on 125-96. Okay, motion by Mosey, second by Allen. Any questions? Yes. I have one, <clears throat> Mr. Miller. Um, Mary Lou Winkler. Yes. Additions, changes, deletions, I, I, the extra I duty. Don't, I don't, uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be derogatory, but I, I remember from past extra duty, she seemed like her name came up um, two or three times. Is she coaching three, four teams? Well, if you notice on this particular one, Mr. Mosey. Um, I know she's she's relieved from lacrosse 7 right. 8 to, and now she's going to be the uh, assistant for grade 9. Right. Happens, I just seem to think in, in past approvals that I, I saw her name yes. quite a bit. I'm just wondering if, if she's coaching several teams. That happens frequently in, in many of our schools where sports are happening at different times of the year and we need coaches. We have okay. many, many different sports and right. we're very, very fortunate that we have staff that are willing to do more okay. than one, one position. So this is a seasonal thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I, I just think not overburden the poor lady ever, <coughs> ever coaching three or four teams and getting home at, you know, midnight every night. No, no, this is seasonal. One at a time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, my only question is I would really like, in order just to keep track of, of, of all the individuals who aren't on extra duty assignment, um, and because I have no way of tracking them at all. I, I would like to know if there's anything that you can develop definitely, um, in regards to giving us um, you know, some kind of a tally or total uh, extra duty assignments and salaries that individuals make if there are uh, more than one That's duty right. that, that, that they're doing. I mean, some, some people only sign up for one extra duty uh, assignment. We have others that do more. In those cases, I'd like to know how many different assignments they have and what their total extra duty salary is. We keep track of that very carefully so we mm -hmm. can do that. I mean, it does, I don't think it has to be, you know, just, you know, in a, in a you want to to it or, mm -hmm. you know, report when, when you come to us with extra duty. I just think that would be helpful for me. When, when would you speak to a like that sometime later on in the year? Well, I mean, it's up to the consensus of the board, but I just, you know, I, I start, start with initial list that, that clocks how much time uh, based on uh, extra duty assignments have been maybe the first this first half year or even by marking periods or seasons that might be best because payroll is affected by season I guess on the athletes at least okay any other questions all in favor say aye, aye. aye. opposed say nay. nay abstentions Thank you. Before we get any further, I need a little help with the student cameraman. Can you let me know how we are for time? Do you need a break? Ten minutes? Okay. You're all righty. You're on. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Rose. Well, in the spirit of that goal, uh, let, let, let me recommend that you approve the additions to the professional and support staff substitute lists as found on item BA-6. <laughs> Motion by Schilling, second by Schur. Any questions? No. Nope. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Abstentions? Thank you. Item H is a recommendation that you approve the request for student travel as listed on page B87. And you will note that they are uh, music groups, uh, choral groups, and band groups moving through district, regional, and state uh, honors uh, opportunities. Um, motion by Hill, second by Mosey. Any questions? Question. This, this is budgeted for, is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Abstentions? Thank you. 
the, the vandalism report is information and it's uh, presented to you uh, uh, for your uh, study on page BA-8. Doesn't require any action. Okay. Okay, you're now at other business and this is a correction that the board wanted made on the action taken for the uh, in section one of the 1996 bond series uh, and the correction is found on item 127-96 uh, okay. developed by uh, Mr. Kelly I think in in concert with yes. Mr. Bradbury. Mr. Franklin. Yes, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Franklin who was not available this evening. I'd like to introduce Mr. John Prendergast who is also a representative of this firm and he's here to answer any questions that you would have. Okay. I recommend approval of this amendment as, as written. Okay. Motion by Hill. I'd like to second that motion. I don't really believe that we need a representative. This is to clarify exactly the... Uh, he was asked for Mr. Scher at the last meeting. Okay. Okay. Second by Scher. Any questions? Starting to the right, Mr. Schilling. Mr. Scher. Mrs. Krieger. Uh, my only question is in regards to the resolution. Uh, if the board would just look at section one under subtitle A, last line. I believe it should be H, B, and C, comments, not S. Is that correct, Doug? That is correct. Okay. Okay, that's a typo. Like All right. Mr. Hill? No Mr. Question. Clemens? I just have a comment. Um, it's in regards to uh, some of the information that was given at the last the meeting that I did not attend. It's the official statement that we all received. Um, I just had a comment about that. Um, on and the, under the appendix, under the appendix uh, A2, it had North Penn School District facilities and it had rated pupil capacities for our schools. The source was school district officials, and they're off. That is yeah. not. That is not. The, I mean, it not says correct. Hatfield Elementary, 850. Well, that they're would be great. Correct. That's not correct information. Okay. We have on flower rated capacity. I would just like that to be noted that uh, I did not. The capacities definitely were off. Okay. That's the only comment. I think Thank you. Uh, we got it. Well, it was in our packet, but that was probably it was the draft for the official statement. I would think that goes in with the something that's filed. He apparently has gone back. Apparently, that they've been listed in their report. Well, I would just like to see them correct him that they were not correct. Okay. Okay. And then I copy that to the board, Mr. Wood. Mr. Allen? No. Mr. Mosey? In, in conjunction with that same uh, sheet that Tom's looking at, um, I thought, I don't, I don't I thought have, it was good reading. I, I really enjoyed it. Was, I don't have mine in front of me, but doesn't it specifically state the amounts? In other words, $18 million in the beginning. Oh, in the beginning, it yes. $18 million for the high school and $2.6 million for the vote tech. Or, Somewhere here. I yeah, here it is. Purpose of the bond. Yeah, Maybe well, should, shouldn't that be in a resolution as well? I, I think, I, I don't know. I guess it is a resolution just thinks well, that all iteration additions to Fendale or anything. I checked to that and it looked okay. It okay. said, but it, 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 it said uh, renovations to Knapp Elementary School and 16 elementary school modulars. He's talking about broken down by dollars. 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 And dollars. And it has but dollars it, there. Yeah, but it doesn't have in the resolution. I'm wondering, uh, shouldn't this coincide with. That's why. It's just amending the resolution. The resolution is more general. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay, just okay ladies and gentlemen, let, let the solicitor fine. answer. Which one would be fine the resolution? The amendment is amending the It's amending the resolution, but what I'm saying is that that copy that the top has, I apologize, I don't have mine with me tonight. But under, under item A, where it states res, uh, and alterations and additions, uh, purchase of 16 modulars. I believe there were dollar figures. But that's still in the base that's resolution. Still still the base the resolution. There's an amendment to that resolution. You say what it's for. This is part of it. You're saying it's stated in this original resolution? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. Are you okay? One question I have. Then. Thank you. All righty. I thought that one agreement, one form was 
Albany presidents than the other. And I no, agree you're too far from If two of them have to conform, then we better spell the dollar amounts out in the resolution of that story. The original had the right dollar figure the wrong project. Right. So had an addition in that. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Nay. Any abstentions? Thank you. Treasurer's report, Mr. Kelly. For the month of November 1996, we have cash receipts in the amount of $5,715,504.39. Year to date receipts $90,009,461.58. Disbursements for the month of November 1996, $7,502,906.33. Disbursements year to date, $42,274,399.43. Total investment, uh, investments as of uh, November 30th, $55,208,093.79. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kelly. Continue. Uh, I'd like to recommend approval uh, of the disbursements listed for the month of November in the amount of $7,280,143.60 approve the disbursements for the month of December in the amount of $1,160,430.24. So moved. Motion by Mosey. Second by Schilling. Any questions? I just have a question on the student activity detail that you sent us, Dennis. Yes, ma'am. Um, I noticed that the ending balance is zero for November. Do you transfer in money into that account just according to the expenditures that you receive on any given month? What page are you referring to? I'm looking at page seven, the last page. And you balance zero. And it shows year to date debits and year to yes, that we date transfer the credits. Money. It's we, the same. We keep so do you money transfer? invested and we transfer it in as needed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That was my only question. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed would say nay. Abstentions? Thank you. Continue, Mr. Kelly. Uh, for the month of November in the area of food service, we had total income of $334,454.23. For all food costs of $184,182.86, which then gave us a gross profit on sales of $150,271.37, deducting our operating costs of $135,029.50, and gave us a profit for the month of $15,241.87 and a year-to-date profit of $115,475.03. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kelly, and our uh, best wishes, as always, to uh, Mrs. Irwin. It's great to see Mrs. Irwin in New York with the profit. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Federal programs, Mr. Bowes. No report. No report. Before the solicitor's report, I'd like to uh, have placed on the... Um, on, on the minutes, within the minutes, uh, Mrs. Hatfield, that this board did convene tonight at 645 uh, in executive session for purposes of two matters involving litigation and a matter of personnel. <coughs> okay, solicitor's report. I have no report, Ms. Fine. Okay, and for those of you in the audience who do not recognize the solicitor with us this evening, this is Mr. John Dooley, affectionately known as Jack to us, and he is, of course, from the firm of Shell Bartle, Yanoff, and Dooley, and replacing Mr. Frank Bartle this evening. It's nice to know that I'm affectionate. Well, that's because you, you you just keep those fees down, uh, Jack, and and, and uh, uh, yes, sir. We we have been advised that. Our application is, is taking longer in processing, but we will hear in January about our award, Thank our you. entitlement. Thank you. Okay, now, Mrs. Schur has a Christmas present for everybody tonight. Mrs. Schur, a motion to adjourn from Mrs. Schur. <laughs> from Mrs. Schur, and Mrs. Krieger would like to second that? Okay. 9.30. 9.30.